What's going on guys? Welcome back for another quad vlog. So as you guys can probably tell, we have the big gun dual exhaust installed on the Raptor and honestly, first impressions is holy shit, this thing is loud. So I'll be honest with you guys, this is the first ride that I've done on the quad with a helmet on, like the first proper ride, right? I've gone for rides without the helmet and I'm like, okay, you know, it's, it's, the quad's quite a bit louder, you know, it sounds pretty good, real nice sound to it, but oh my God, with a helmet on, the thing is like three times as loud. I don't really know exactly why, but, uh, I think the sound just must get trapped in my helmet or something and then I'm not really a, a huge fan of that. It's honestly so, it's obnoxious, like in the helmet. I don't know how long it's going to take for me to get a headache, but I feel like I might have to start wearing earplugs. And honestly, I hope the audio turns out on the video because I really don't know how loud this is in the helmet. To me, it sounds extremely loud, but with a mic, you just never know, you know? So hopefully this video turns out semi-good. And I just forgot I left my license plate at home. So we're gonna go ahead and head back home to get that and then we'll finish the video. So in today's video, I wanted to come out and do a short review for you guys and let you guys know what I think about the exhaust. Um, honestly, I absolutely love the exhaust, the way it looks, the way it sounds, everything is great about it and of course I'm gonna go over a couple things that I don't like and that I would wish that I wish were different um, but we'll do that off the quad in just a few minutes so I'm gonna start off by talking about the performance gains because obviously that's kind of what everyone wants to know and hands down like no question in my mind this exhaust made a huge difference um, to the bottom end power and even like huge mid-range power increase I guess I'm not really so sure of top end, but I'm sure there's top end gain as well. But uh, it, you just feel it throughout the whole power band. This exhaust makes the quad feel completely different. And of course, to take advantage of those power gains, you have to have a power commander. So I get a lot of comments saying like, do I need a power commander? What's, what should I get? What exhaust should I get? The first question that you need to ask yourself before you're thinking about getting an exhaust is, do you have a power commander? Because if you don't have an exhaust, uh, sorry, if you don't have a power commander on a fuel injected uh, machine, whatever you have, you're basically doing nothing. Like you should not be getting an exhaust until you have a power commander. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I already have a headache because this thing is so dang loud. I'm gonna have to start wearing earplugs when I go riding with a helmet at least. <laughs> like it's, it's honestly bad. If I were to take a guess at how much power we added to the Raptor, I would say at least five horsepower and at least a couple foot pounds of torque. So probably like a conservative estimate, I would say is 10% bare minimum that we added, um, which that would be about four horsepower and three foot pounds of torque or something like that. But uh, that's probably on the low side. We're probably sitting at like six or seven horsepower and um, probably four or five foot pounds of torque. Obviously, I'm not probably gonna take this thing to the dyno because I don't even know where I would find someone that could dyno this. So it's kind of, you're kind of just guessing, but it, you feel a significant power increase when you add a dual exhaust to the Raptor 700. I've already talked about this in the last video I made, but I want to talk about a couple reasons why I got the big gun dual exhaust over the other dual exhaust systems. First of all, the main reason is it's the cheapest out of pretty much all of them. So I paid, I think 600 bucks with tax, free shipping of course. Um, I'll leave a link in the description of this video uh, to where I got my exhaust. I think I just ordered it off Amazon. You know, you can't really go wrong there. Um, the quality is great. So for 600 bucks, like if you compare that to the other exhaust systems, if you're just gonna do the big three, which I am, I don't plan to do a cam or big bore or anything to this quad. The big gun dual exhaust is by far your best bet, uh, best bang for the buck as well. I honestly don't know why they didn't just make the Raptor come with a dual exhaust. This engine and this quad loves a dual exhaust. The stock exhaust has so much back pressure and restriction. Honestly, they just like completely suffocated the engine by putting the stock exhaust on this engine. 
Hey, another quad. So I know this video is probably gonna kind of be a short one, but I do want to get off the quad up here, go over a couple of things that I don't actually like about the exhaust. Very minor things, but I do want to talk about them. Um, and then I'm gonna give you guys a better look at the exhaust. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, that's gonna kind of be annoying. All right, we are gonna move. This guy's actually annoying me. All right, I think I'm in a better spot now, not too noisy. Um, first off, I'm gonna roll a couple clips of what the exhaust system looks like. So I'll roll that now for you guys and then I'll get back to you. Okay, next I want to go over a couple things that I didn't necessarily like about the exhaust. It's mainly just how the exhaust sits and the installation process. So, mainly just on the left exhaust because that's the side of the Raptor that doesn't usually have an exhaust. So in the first video I was talking about the wiring, that's one of the complaints, and then the shock reservoir, that's the other complaint. Um, there's obviously really not a whole lot you can do. I just wish that I guess partly that the tube curved a little bit differently to maximize your room in between everything. Since I filmed the first video, I have taken the exhaust off and wrapped my wires in, I think it's like a Kevlar heat resistant protectant for the wires so my wiring won't melt. I'm just checking if my zip ties are all good, yeah. So that's hopefully going to protect my wiring. I'm pretty confident that's okay. And the other thing, like I was talking about, is the shock reservoir. Now, it's not touching the shock reservoir, but it is dang close to the shock reservoir. So, yeah, it's really close. It doesn't touch. I've checked multiple times. And I've tried to work it away from that so many different times, but it just always somehow works its way back closer to the shock reservoir. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do about that. I'm going to obviously keep trying to move it farther away. But it just... uh like I said, it just keeps nudging that way, even how, after I tightened down the bolts and everything like that. So those are the two things I don't like. Again, not really major, major things. I just wish that this tube was a little curved differently. All right, and finally, the last thing I don't really like is now I don't have a license plate mount, so I have to mount it over there for now and just have it zip tied on. But usually it mounts right here. Obviously can't have my license plate right there anymore. So I don't know if you guys can hear too well, I have my external mic on with the GoPro outside of the helmet, but this is what it sounds like, obviously idling. Sounds pretty good. Give it a little rev for you guys. Alright, well I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button below. If you guys have any comments or questions, also leave them below. And I will see you guys on the next one.